All right, everybody, welcome back. So, the F-104 Starfighter, uh, one of the more popular vehicles in War Thunder, especially the American ones, and uh, one which you see in five different nations, is the next victim of the Flight Model Reaper. This is also, at least to my memory, the most massive Flight Model nerf that I have ever seen in War Thunder. It is absolutely ridiculous. I do have one small positive thing for my American F-104 players before we get to all the rest of the negative, and trust me, there is a lot. But you do get a slightly better kit on your F-104C now, and there's actually a reason to play it. So previously, the F-104C was just heavier at the same BR than the F-104A with the same thrust. And sure, it got an RWR, but the only planes that have, you know, effective radar missile at this BR that you had to fight are now the MiG-21S, and they have J-Band radar, which your RWR couldn't pick up. Well, now you get access to four AIM-9Bs instead of two, so there is a reason to play it now. That is the only positive thing about any of these planes that I can say, because boy, oh boy, this nerf was insane. If you have seen these bug reports and what came out of them before, then you'll know exactly what I'm about to say, but if you haven't, let me lay it out for you. Whenever you see incorrect sustained turn performance, that's not talking about just pulling and holding yes that is talking about at a specific speed pulling a specific amount of g's how hard it can turn so that means we're specifically talking about the turn that you can sustain indefinitely without losing any speed the way that guys actually fine tunes this whenever they're doing flight models is by changing the oswald efficiency values and if you don't know what that is well the oswald efficiency is basically how much induced drag at the wing generates remember induced drag is what you're doing when you're pulling aoa so that means that a nerf to the Oswald ratio doesn't just affect your sustained turn rate performance, it also massively affects just how much speed you pull in general every time you do any kind of maneuver. To a smaller degree, it also affects your top end speed and acceleration because your plane still has to pull some AOA to actually be able to keep itself up in the air. So changing this value can massively impact almost every regime of flight for a plane, and as you can see, the end result after this absolutely gigantic nerf, because it went from 0.72 all the way down to 0.47. That is insane. I can't think of a bigger one that I have ever seen. But essentially what that means is you bleed a ton more speed now than you used to previously, and the amount of lift that you generate is also much lower as well. You probably noticed in the background, but I'm having to be very careful about every time I pull. Unlike the old F-104 flat model, and by the way, I made an F-104 video recently. If you want to go back after this video and watch this, you can see the comparison. The difference is absolutely absurd. But you can see I'm having a hard time outrunning just stuff like the MiG-21S. My acceleration at the high end is much, much lower than it used to be previously. And every time I pull, every time I dodge, I'm bleeding more speed than I used to as well. Which is overall much less effective. The sustained turn rate isn't the only thing that got nerfed, by the way. They also massively nerfed the instantaneous turn rate as well. And that is when you're actually bleeding speed to pull. So, you know, previously the F-104 had some really good high speed turn rates. Like you could hit 12, 13, sometimes 15 Gs, depending on what speed you were at. And it was pretty agile. You'd be pulling quite a bit of AOA and you could also somewhat turn around to engage enemies. You can see right here, I'm pulling 9, maybe 10 Gs now. That is almost 50% less than I would have been pulling at that speed previously. And as I'm doing it, that energy retention is coming into play. I'm already all the way down at 0.75 Mach after just doing a simple 180. So to put it simply, you now turn much worse at every speed, and you also bleed a lot more speed while you're doing it than you did previously. For the F-104 A and C, which you see me playing the C right now, it's not that big of a deal. These things were massively overperforming at 9.3 previously, and so basically what this does is just make the playing field a bit more even. You're still much faster than basically everything else at the BR. You just have to play a lot more cautiously now, and you can't just do whatever you want and still win like you, you could previously. The problem is the F-104 A and C are not the only F-104s in the game. There are higher tier ones that are in a much, much, much worse state now than they were previously. One great example of this is the F-104 G series, including the F-104 J, and these sit somewhere between 10.3 to 11.0, depending on whether or not they have flares and other stuff like that. And all of these face vehicles, which are much closer to it in speed, they can no longer easily outrun everything like the 9.3 ones can. And in the case of the F-104J and the Taiwanese F-104G, these are both flareless as well. That means they rely on both their speed and being able to drain the missile of energy to actually be able to survive if someone shoots these much more capable missiles at them. 
And what are the two things that got massively impacted? Energy retention and speed. The German and Italian F-104Gs, of course, are better off at 11.0 with their flares, but that still means they're at 11.0. The same battle rating as the J7E, with a much worse flight model than previously. And they're not even the worst impacted, if you ask me. The F-104S ASA, which that 12.0, also got hit with this massive nerf. So just to be clear, that means that an F-104, which can now no longer pull more than like 10 Gs and also bleed speed like a pig, can and will fight the F-15 and Gripen, which uh, is kind of a massive difference in power. A good chunk of that is that the fact that, well, the F-15 and Gripen shouldn't be at 13.0 in the first place, and high tier is incredibly compressed, even more so after the recent BR changes, but before this at least, the ASA could somewhat rely on us good deck performance because it is noticeably faster than the F-15 on the deck, but after this, if it's having to dodge or do anything besides fly in a straight line, I have very little faith in its ability to actually be able to keep that speed up. And it's not as if the kit is anything special in particular either, because you just get either four A9Ls or two A9Ls and two SB days, which are basically AIM-72s on crack. Realistically though, all of these high tier F-104s need to go down in BR. Not the 9.31s, please, for the love of God, don't move those things down the 9.0. They've been terrorizing at 9.3 for long enough. If you ask me, they could probably still go to 9.7 just because of how fast they are, but this flat model nerf made them somewhat bearable to deal with at 9.3. The first step would be for the Taiwanese F-104G. So they could either leave it at 10.7 where it is right now and give it flares, which is what I think they should probably do, or they can move it down to 10.3 with the F-104J. Just a friendly reminder, currently the F-104J is a lower BR than the F-104G, despite both of them being essentially the same airframe, and the F-104J having more missiles. The F-104S should probably go to 11.0, and I'd say the ASA could go down to 11.7, maybe 11.3, just depends on how it's doing stats-wise. If you ask me, the ASA was already worse than the MiG-23 MLD, which was even before the nerf, at 11.7 while the ASA was at 12.0. The flight model nerf just made it even more one-sided. On that note, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did and you're not subscribed already, please go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Uh, we're getting close to 20k and I'm pretty excited. Let me know what y'all think of these changes in the comments down below and I will catch y'all next time. So peace y'all.